Hi everyone, it's Nadia Jake Sedona and this is Buddy and we're back with another video. Today we're going to talk about Smile which we just watched right now um, and came home and wanted to record this because I'm dying to talk about it and I have so much anxiety. <laughs> Non-spoiler first, um, I would say that I would rate this film 7.5 out of 10. I think it was really well executed. There were some parts that were unintentionally funny. I think there are people who are defending this movie um, a lot who are saying that it's self-aware. I don't think it's self-aware. I think it's trying to be very serious and that's my issue I'll get into later. But part of my <laughs> issue is, and I think this is a fundamental issue that if you think people smiling creepily is scary then it'll work but i just think it's so goofy <laughs> why the hell is everyone in the world smiling uh, like i i noticed that after the movie like and it creeped me the crap out like so what would you rate it for 4.5 wow i thought you liked it a lot more than that it, it was very boring I thought you said you were scared parts of the movie too. I was, yeah. I mean, there were, I'm mean, mostly because you were like digging your nails into my hand, but uh, <laughs> that part was scary. But so, um, did I bring the rating up a little bit higher? You did because there were parts where I, I would have, I was just kind of like staring at the screen like this, but because you kept jumping, it like startled me. <laughs> so you definitely make horror movies scarier, which is fun. I like that more. You know, it makes it more fun. I'm such a scaredy cat, guys. But the um, problem is that maybe if it was a bit self aware about the premise which i thought was kind of goofy you know very reliant on the jump scares more than i don't anything. think that that's what i got out of the film though i think what you know it's interesting when i first started watching the film and then it kind of goes into the premise of it i was like oh man we watched the thing um it follows well yeah that's and when we wa we're watching smile and they're all about a monster imitating humans yeah but i feel like this movie especially takes from it follows and it's too bad because it follows i think does a similar premise really well and doesn't rely on jump scares and i feel like it's a completely different film because of the vibe though it's trying to have this very serious tone that isn't you know and then it became like mike flanagan-esque at at the end which just felt very clumsy and heavy-handed and it just had a lot of the tropes of modern horror that i don't like and it was trying to be like an elevated horror like it looked in a lot of ways like an Ari Aster, mo Ari Aster movie. The premise and the storyline and the material was just too weak to warrant this kind of treatment. I feel like if it had a wink, wink, nudge, nudge uh, sentiment about it, which it kind of does, I feel like in the last 15 minutes or so, where it becomes more of like a monster movie. For the rest of it, it's just, we've seen this type of premise of, oh, person is cursed. They think they're going crazy. The grudge, it's- uh, Well, you know, I mean, I think like if you were to compare a lot of popular horror films, yes, they're all repetitive in a lot of ways. I think it what makes them stand out is the way that it's executed. Yeah. I think that because literally within the last 30 days, less than that probably, I watched all of these three films that I mentioned um, that's all about imitating, like the monster imitating humans in some kind of way or another. It's like, whoa, okay. Like I kind of got like in the beginning of the film, I was like, Okay, well, let's see. It's kind of almost feels like I'm rating these specific type of films yeah, to see which one like executes it better. I do think that the, the 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 writing of the main character is where it really fell for me in the beginning yeah. of the film. I don't think her background, like, I just feel like she is, I don't know if it's doing that intentionally. I want to say it is, but then there were parts of the film that made me seem like, made it seem like the writers weren't intentionally trying to make her like a horrible, like not very listening to herself kind of psychiatrist. Like she was just like a definition of someone who like needed therapy. In a well, it's, it's funny that you... Uh, were hard on the thing because you thought the characters were being stupid when in this movie it's like oh my god it feels way way like what are these characters doing like they're acting ridiculous and their choices aren't making a ton of sense i had a lot of issues with the main character and, and like you said i think the main character in a lot of movies and not just horror movies but like general storytelling today i think treats character as something where there's like a key to unlock there's a trauma to unlock mm -hmm. this character and that's what they are and once we know the trauma and i think mike flanagan does this in a lot of his storytelling but a lot of storytelling does this where exposition a little bit where more. it's like the exposition yeah. of like you unlock the trauma you unlock the person and that's who they are and this character had the very kind of typical sort of there's a slight alteration to a slight twist which made it a little better but it was kind of like 
she has this trauma and she has to deal with it and the monster is representing that and it's very bludgeoning you over the head with it especially at the end and you know it just to me for most of the movie it was just so predictable i could tell exactly when the jump scares were going to happen some of the jump scares were a little unique. I did too. That's why I like hid under your arm. Well, exactly. It's like you knew you, every, you, I was like, you oh, could hide. It's gonna, this is a moment. You could cover your happen. eyes every time because it's it was so it predictable. It was very predictable, yeah. The jump scare, right. it's nothing you haven't seen before except slight changes. And then some of the jump scares were, or some of the scares were just legitimately like funny. And you even thought that too. Trying to be this super serious, dramatic Mike Flanagan but I style feel like, story. But I feel like I have to defend that because a lot of horror films have the beat. If you look at Halloween, you can tell where jump scares are too. I think it's like the music. If you just listen to the music in itself, you can tell when it's trying to... But here's like, the thing. There, Halloween there's a formula to came it. out in 1978. You know, we've seen... The, it's like, I think there's something where it's like Halloween invented the slasher genre, revolutionized it, popularized it and then now we're in you know 2022 and it's like you i crave something more these are stuff we've seen again and again in a lot of ways and the movie does way less with its atmosphere the atmosphere was bland i thought you know it was just like any other horror movie jump scare after jump scare and sure they're effective because in your when you're in a theater it's loud and obnoxious and they crank up the volume well, and it's and like it put, startles you but it's is it scary but i think like in defense of the writers or the creators it is when you go out of, outside that formula, it's a hit or miss. It's not always like, and I think that only certain films are willing to take that risk because it's like, it's a very controversial thing a lot of times. So I really liked some of the creative choices as far as directing. I do think that the storyline doesn't make sense in the as far as what you mentioned, the choices of the, the main character, Dr. Rose until you understand the full extent to her past. I'd argue that on the contrary, I thought the directing was poor and very heavy handed. I How thought, so? I thought it was clumsy and heavy handed. And I thought that there was something, because I've seen these actors, uh, a lot of them in good roles. I thought that the directing, something was off with it because they had no chemistry. But there what was do you something, think that something weird was? about the performance. The performances were off. It was like, and then the, the filmmaking itself, there were so many shots of like just head on, face on, symmetrical, sort of just like this in mannered look about it, but just took me out of the movie. I feel like what you're talking about is not directing though, it's casting. Cause I felt the same way, but I don't think it's directing. I think so, there, there was a lack of chemistry. I think directing those. had a lot to do with it, but I think the casting too. I mean, from the start, I wasn't, keen on the the lead's performances early on i thought she was going over the top right from the beginning you know i didn't feel that way i felt like she was i felt the opposite of you felt like she was underperforming really completely i maybe you and i are talking about the same thing but just like a different like describing it differently because i'm thinking like okay there might be she must have a terrible home life she must have well, this and this and this because of the way she's acting right now and it's so consistent it's like you i thought that there was a monster present from the very beginning of the film um because of the way she was acting like she was escaping something but at the same time it was like she was not it, it was weird because she's a psychiatrist but she was not aware of her own actions sure that's there too but also i thought her performance like i kept thinking watching this and there's a shocking opening scene, which I won't get into, but right from that scene, she's playing it like at a really anxious heightened level. And I kept thinking like, she is a, like an emergency psychiatrist, you know, mm -hmm. who's like seeing the absolute worst stuff day in, day out. They mentioned that she pulls 80 hour weeks, you know, dealing with people who are having breakdowns all the time and are like, she's seen probably some crazy shit. And then it, it just felt like her, she wasn't behaving as I thought a psychiatrist would, uh, like, realistically from the but start. But that's what I'm saying, though. That's exactly what I'm saying. I felt like yeah. she was very underperforming. I don't think, like, she was, like, over... Like, I just felt like she was... There's this dinner scene um, where her fiancé says, like, you know, she would she loves doing what she lo does so much that she'd do it for free, which I kind of, like, rolled my eyes at. But I hate <laughs> it when people say that. It's like, yeah. yeah, they should be working for free because they're public service. They just like, love it so hell. much. Uh, shut the hell up. No one deserves to be working for well, me. She comes but, across as just like 
unreasonably generous. Well, I just felt like, it, and, and you do, I mean, I will get into the spoiler section. You do understand why she's unreasonably generous, but I also still felt like it was too unreasonable. And I also felt like she like had no chemistry with her fiance. That they, was they so, had like a more of a even he when, was so miscast or it was he, something was so off. No, I think they were trying to do it on purpose, and I'll say why in the spoiler section. Okay. But there know? wasn't even a sign of like intimacy at all. And but, like, but his when it, act that's why I think it's on purpose because his actions in the film. I know, but I think that. they were they were like like sure that's the subtext in those scenes because they know as actors what's gonna happen later on, but it was like too heavy-handed and that's what I think like her character she's seeing these visions later on in the movie but early on it seems like she's just um uh forecasting that too much you know for the audience and I feel like also with their her scenes with the fiance they're like like the way they're interacting I thought they were like t they'd been together for like a few weeks like they just started dating I didn't think they were a fiance no what? and then when they did it I was like what clicked to me that that was her fiance even though they said it yeah. Until maybe like the second or third time. It's like, oh, my fiance. I'm like, oh, that's right. But I also the, felt like her sister's chemistry with her husband didn't make sense at all. Also, and when they introduced the sister, she's so over the top, like in a different movie. What tone are they going for? That's what I mean where I think the directing, and this is a first time feature for this director, I believe. Direction going on that wasn't exactly I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's a lot of like casting with writing and well, yeah, maybe some true. directing, but I don't think it's just a direction di director's fault because at the end of the day, I think the material is just written the way that it is. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I feel like the problem is there are some good jump scenes. There are some good scares, especially at the end of the movie. Oh, these are cool. I wish the movie was more like this early on. But the problem is that the majority of it is what we're talking about, just weird, no chemistry scenes with her fiance and her ex so and her sister. So when you focus you know? on those things, which But that's the majority is, of the movie. No. I disagree. And that's why I think I rated it a seven point something is because if I was just to focus on those scenes, yes, I would agree with you. It's like more like, I would say five, but I think it's literally about loneliness and isolation and trying to... It's about trauma. It, well, yes, that's kind of obvious. They like even stated it, but that's it's about my thing. trauma. It's just like... It, they, they, they're explicit about that, honey. Very explicit. Which was, yeah. And one thing I will say that actually I want to go back on my rating from 7.5 to like 7 is that. Yes, knock it down. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's get down to 6.5. The One of the reasons why I for, like I want to rate it from 7.5 to 7 is because. Um, Remember you rated the thing 7? I did. So this would be the same. Um, <laughs> it hurts my soul. Um, I feel like the obvious answer on how to beat the monster was present from early on in the film. I mean, like any film, right? The conclusion isn't until the end. Like that's like no, no genius needs to tell anyone that. It's like the conclusion was like felt like, do you not know math kind of thing? Well, almost. So, something as well as like, so a movie like It Follows, we're following the characters trying to figure out how to beat the monster and trying to investigate what's it all about. And I thought that movie does it in a way that wasn't, too, it wasn't too like into trying to investigate how this works. It's more about the surreal feeling. This movie, I felt like I was always one step ahead of the script or like, think about yeah. a movie like Barbarian. Like remember watching Barbarian and it's like, you don't know where this is going. And it's, it's always like, we wanted more, like give us more about information about what's going on. But it's always suggesting things and we're always trying to figure out what's going on. This movie is largely like probably the second act of the movie is her investigating. It's a two hour film. Yeah, yeah, but it's probably her investigating. There's a lot of investigating. It just, it's not super uh, compelling. I could already figure out what was going on. And it's like, if we can already guess how it works and the second they mention a certain thing, it's like, okay, we get it. We know how it works. We don't have to keep investigating. Like, I do feel like they could have cut it a lot. I guess for me- It's too long, yeah. Yeah, uh, like for me, I looked at it almost like I look at like a Michael Myers film. It's like, oh, you know, like I knew what was going to happen like you know as i told you in the theater i was like okay this is gonna happen this is like no there's no way this happened this is a fake out why i really think this is a good film is because it's ultimately supposed to just scare you and maybe i'm a scary cat i mean i don't deny it but i honestly think that it does a good job of doing that 
Um, especially if you go to a film with a scaredy cat like me, apparently I made it more scary for Jake. So I do want to go to the spoiler section because I think there's a lot to unpack there. Let's do it. So, so if you haven't seen the film, go watch the film and then watch this, um, session. I do recommend that you watch that. And do you recommend that they go watch it? Uh, I'd say it's a toss. I mean, there are people who are enjoying it for sure. Um, be ready for maybe some clumsy stuff about trauma and a lot of jump scares. So if you like jump scares, you'll like it. Yes. Um, with that being said, in the spoiler section, so I will say her fiance, it's so hard. Even when he comes into the room in the beginning of the movie, it's like their kiss is so awkward. <laughs> You know, like it's almost like she even like wanted mon- like like for a couple seconds she's like forgets to kiss him. And she's like, oh hey, and then kisses him. Yeah, so casual. It's almost like they have a business relationship. But it was to the point where we're supposed to feel something when he doesn't believe her. And what bothered me the most is that it was just so weirdly over the top. Where it's like he was behaving scared towards- as shit for what? Like- he was he was like when she tells him like this is what I think is happening. He isn't like I want to help you. Like I'm, I want to take care of you. Like I get shit. She killed the cat or. He thinks she killed the cat. There's no sense of care. And he's just like, um, well, I, you know, hitched my, I, I, you know, what did he, what is he saying? He, he like researches mental illness because her mom killed herself. They think we find out at the end that actually she tried to kill herself, but then, um. No, she did kill herself. No. Well, she, she, she committed suicide. Yes. But she asked her 10 year old daughter for like oh i made a mistake to call 911 she She regretted it and then she ends up dying because her daughter doesn't and that's the key to the main character's story yeah that's the key to the main character's story so and then that's when you see why she overworks herself because i think she's trying to like escape that aspect because everyone thinks that like her mom, I mean, her mom did mean to like commit suicide, but there, no one knows about this aspect of the story where she refused to call 911 so her mom could be saved um, because her mom was uh, so horrible to her growing up. So she's trying to escape that by helping as many patients as possible. But in doing so, she overworks consistently and everything else. In the scene where the monster kills the cat, a really traumatizing scene for her nephew because it happens to the nephew's birthday. He opens a present and it turns out to be the dead cat. She sees the monster. No one else sees the monster. And then um, she falls so... and then she goes to the doctor. It was and so then... ridiculous. Like that scene was and then, played and then, so over the top. And then you could see the sister in like a mirror, like a, uh, like a glass. You could see the sister and the fiance just kind of like, what the fuck is wrong with her? Kind of like you could almost like sense that from them. In the drive home where her fiance is um, driving and kind of like she's trying to be like, listen, I want to tell you everything. I want to tell you what's going on. I did not kill my cat. Um, It's this monster. I'm seeing him, uh, seeing this thing. And she's basically honest about everything that she's going through. And she thinks that she's going to die and she needs help. And she, you know, like confiding in her fiance, like a person. He's like so unaffectionate. He just like you said, he's like scared of her right away. And then he says, I researched <laughs> if mental illness can run in the family because of what happened to her mom. I just then, I love that and then, he says he had to research that. I feel like that's kind of a, a common knowledge. A common knowledge. That, like, like that's how mental can be health passed, things work. Yeah, he's like, I researched it. She's like why would you do that? And then she's like, well, I want to know who I'm spending the rest of my life to. Is that so crazy? And I'm like, but you guys are like fiancés. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean you want to research who you're going to be married to? Did, how long have you guys been? T- is this like 30 day fiance kind of thing? Like what is happening here? But that's okay. That's what I mean is that it just feels like the characters are not acting like people. They're acting like their singular character idea slash quality he represents keeping things in you know not uh uh, communicating just trying to pretend like everything's okay which is how she starts the movie too he represents that he's an idea he's not a person he doesn't come across like a real character that and i think that she is a little more fleshed out but for the most part it just doesn't feel like they're actual characters and here's an example and i know i mentioned barbarian earlier and maybe it's not a fair comparison but 
when you think about Barbarian, it like the, the, the main character, the woman, and I was thinking about this watching the movie. I'm like, we don't find anything about her backstory. We don't know a single thing about her family, about her parents, about her trauma. We know nothing. Yet she is a very compelling character because we see the choices she makes in the movie under pressure. That reveals her character. We don't need to have her explain her trauma. We don't need to see flashbacks to her trauma. We don't need to see any of that in order for us to become attached to her, know who she is because she does heroic things and she acts a certain way. And that's how we get to know who she is. Similar to the Justin Long character, although we find out more backstory about him. Mm -hmm. Um, But a fundamental difference in the writing of character that I think a lot of horror movies and a lot of writing today is, is doing where it's doing that sort of like model of let's explore this character from like the idea of there's this key to their trauma that we need to unlock. I don't think, I don't disagree with you, but I don't agree with you because I don't think it's necessarily like you're right about Barbarian. Like at the end of the day, we just, characters, human beings, everyone is defined by the choices that they make, right? They talk about the past to show them like, why are they making these choices? What is affected? And that can be compelling in this film, it wasn't compelling because it was just off. She is, uh, she talks about like, you need some more rest. You need to do this. You know, sometimes when we have this or go through a trauma, we go through psychosis, but it's like, she's not self-aware. She used to be in therapy and everything else. And, and then when she goes to see her old therapist, she's very aware of like, okay, it might be this, it might be that, but then she rarely does something about it. And it's almost like she wants to dig decline under mental health well yeah it's like she's a bit, clearly a very smart character and she comes across that at, that way at first but she starts behaving like and i get she's like scared because this she's seeing stuff but also like she's not behaving very intelligently like when she's trying to explain what's going on to her sister she's like like well, she she's shows- like she's like shaking she's like i think i'm Cursed, well, no, you here's know, the and thing. it's like she has files here's to show, that, but it's like, like she's not being very. I just think that she was really dumb because these people aren't taking her seriously. First of all, why would you show dead photos of other people? Why would that past? matter to your sister? Well, it's and why like would she was trying to show like that sister? they were they were all smiling when they died, but it's like she's not receptive to your message, and then you think that showing her dead people, she thinks <laughs> that you're going through like some kind of like psychosis, and you think that. You digging up photos of dead people who are getting, like, disgustingly killed or suicide is going to convince her that you're not, like, going cuckoo? Like, what the hell? Like, And I also feel like, you know, when she is in this um, with her ex-boyfriend, I felt like that relationship didn't work as well either because, like, yeah, he cares about her. But then in the beginning of the film, when he's, like, goes visits back to the hospital, it's, like, it almost seems like he did something wrong because she's so dismissive of him yeah, and then I like later on we find the out that like the later on we find out that it was her who shut him down because she was actually growing feelings for him yeah. so she ended up being with a, a guy and almost marrying a guy who she didn't have as many much feelings for and it's like yeah this is why sometimes but people like, have bad reputation as a psychiatrist because they're like you know you're it's 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 not it's not portrayed very well i think I, and i, I also a very boring and predictable characterization overall um and also like she keeps like talking to past victims or people not past victims but family members of past victims she keeps like slipping up that she is going through something even when they show hints of like well she can't even pretend to act normal when she's talking to them like like trying to she, act well, like a she, reporter she does she does and then she slips up but then just like oh and then like i think i think one of the funny scenes is when she like has her outburst in the car but then she goes to visit this guy only guy who's that she knows of who escaped this thing and it turns out it's by because he killed a person oh, yeah, either person, you yeah. the thing kills you or you kill another person um in front of someone else so someone they can else. get the trauma yeah it's just passing along trauma yeah. but then she ends up like like losing her character in there too i'm like Dude, you've done this like with the, with the the wife of the guy that you visit, the professor who committed suicide, quote unquote. You did that with your sister. You did that with your fiance. Well, you think you're doing it with this guy. 
guy. Like you would think that like you might want to have a different strategy. Yeah. So it's kind of like you are you are both like supposed to be a smart person. And she's I understand you're not acting like a psychiatrist. She's just acting like a horror movie character. Exactly. And that's when I was like, what the heck, you know? I still give it a seven because I think that <laughs> it was a scary film. But okay, now here's something that really bothered me with the logic of this movie is that so she's thinking, and I first off, I love the scene where she goes into the hospital and she's supposed to be on leave, and then she pulls out her knife and starts stabbing one of the patients in front of <laughs> that the was other so guy. Funny. And it's like it turns out it's a fake out. Like she was imagining it and yeah. she was just sitting in her car the whole time. But the scene is played so seriously, but she's just like repeatedly, repeatedly stabbing this guy who's just like, oh, well, it's, <laughs> like it's, it was, it's, it yeah. was so The guy silly. was like, ah, ah. and then the, the, her, her uh, supervisor who watches this. It's like, oh. Fantasy of her killing it. It's like, oh, oh. And then she's like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like a really funny scene. And we then, were both laughing. Yeah, we were both, we were the only ones laughing. What the heck? But also another funny uh, moment was when her nephew, who literally got gifted a dead cat by his aunt <laughs> the second time when, He's you know, her sister her. doesn't believe her. And then she goes to the car and she's like, ah. And then the nephew is just like, <laughs> <laughs> like traumatized. And I'm like, oh my God, poor boy. I don't know why we're the only ones laughing. Maybe you and I are demented. Uh, there were some funny scenes in this movie. Like, yeah. okay, but the thing that really bothered me. So in, earlier in the movie, they do some poorly done exposition to emphasize that uh, the main character is holding on to a piece of property owned by the mom that the sister's like, why are you still holding the, onto that property? And yeah. she's like, don't bother me about it. So anyways, later God, in the movie, yes. okay, so later in the movie, she just, she realizes finally, of course, I've realized this. I'm sure half the audiences realize like, well, why don't you just, you know, kill yourself alone or be alone and isolate yourself so that you can't pass it on to someone else. And so she's like, I need to end this. And she takes her car, but also she's being followed by the police because she's acting uh, you know, unusual well, in front of her supervisor outside the hospital. So they have police following her. And where does she go to be isolated and get they away? Show police following no, her? they say that. Yeah. yeah no, well, her, 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 her ex-boyfriend who's a police. Who's a police officer. He says that they have yeah. a people going after her. Oh, yeah. yeah. So basically, she she is deciding, okay, where can I go to be totally alone? And they show the forest. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe she's going to just go somewhere in the middle of the forest where she they can't find her. She goes to her mom's she house. She goes to a p property that she owns. <laughs> and it's like, okay, if they're looking for her, they're going to check her house. Well, where else can we check? A friend's house, family member's house, maybe another property that she owns. Yeah. Like her other house. Like it's falling apart, but it's still her house. Okay, why would you choose that as your isolated spot? You're probably not going to be alone. And it's like, all right, whatever. And then she goes to the cabin. And the movie is like a different thing from that point. Because no longer is the logic of the smile monster kind of happening. It's more of like a ghostly thing that's messing with her trauma. And it's like it embodies her mom who's like pretending to and like having this. demonic now. Yeah. And it's like having this conversation with her talking about like, why didn't you save me? Blah, blah, blah. And then it just becomes a big monster, which to be fair, the monster and the monster effects were quite creepy. I thought it was creepy. Um, I was scared shit out of my mind. It was creepy. It was, yeah. and it was done well, but it was like a totally different movie at that point. And the logic of what was happening was kind of gone. She ends up burning it. And it's like a she classic. She thinks she ends up burning She it. thinks she ends up burning it. It's a classic fake out. She goes back to the guys, her ex-boyfriend's place. And it's like, I'm sorry for how I was. Can I stay here? And then he starts smiling. And okay, the thing is in this movie, when the characters start smiling, especially her therapist, it's so um, played seriously, but they just stare directly into the camera and just slowly go. And some of the actors can pull off the intensity. I feel like the actress in the opening scene can pull off the intensity. She's on the poster, for God's sake. I think she can pull off the intensity. But a lot of these characters, it's just, it looks like they're trying to be creepy in like a kids movie or something like it just didn't work for me that whole thing and that's basically the premise of the movie is like creepy smiling but beyond that it's like sure the monster was cool and 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 everything but you know you have the classic fake out horror movie death uh, or horror movie ending that you've seen a million times and she ends up 
lighting herself on fire and then we have she the yeah continuing she, the cycle, monster you know? ends up like you see the monster's true face and the monster takes off its mask and then you see that monster is like has like two mouths like several mouths and stuff and then really gets inside her mouth and possesses her we talk about pessimistic yeah I would say that, like, I think that I really wish there was a way where she could have beat it, to be honest with you. I think it would well, have probably. A, I think thematically it would work better if she did beat it because yeah. they're talk, they're going on the premise of, like, the themes and the trauma. And she like has, she overcomes her she, trauma. I feel like it would have been better if she sacrificed herself almost. Yeah. Um. Uh. Because, and I thought that's what's, where it's going to go. I thought when she burned the monster, she was going to actually let herself burn or something or, like, take her down. I almost I, I felt like setting up sequels. I think they're like, oh, we gotta do this. Maybe because the ex boyfriend is the one who sees her die, which means that he's going to be the one that cursed now. But I think that like it's just it just was you're right, it was very dumb in a lot of aspects, but it just it would have been so much better if she if she actually took in ch- charge of her life and I thought she was going to, when she said the dialogue to the monster who was pretending to be her mom, like, why didn't you save me? It's like, I was 10. And you know what? You're not real. I knew it was like doomed though, because like you said, it's like she goes, she wants to go to a remote person where she's going to be alone forever because she's done running. She goes to her mom's house where literally they talk about, her sister talks about it. Like, why are you holding on to that property? It's like, it's like very clear. Everyone knows you have that property. It's not some kind of weird property that you purchase no. that no one knows about it's not your secret hiding no it's like it's like a very it's like didn't you not think that people were gonna look do you really think that's a good place to be isolated like uh, now i want to rate it six out of ten what the <laughs> yes no yes six no. out of ten i did it You're everyone for i me. did it we did it i honestly think that for me like i have low expectation of a lot of horror films because like you said they are rep- Repetitive, but I think a lot of times, like people that I know who love horror, uh, maybe you guys agree or disagree, are looking for that thrill. And because I do think that there are genuinely some funny moments in this film, that it is a good horror film. That's why I rated it 7.5. If, if you are But I think scared. when you're looking at... Thanks. But I, but I think that if you're looking for more of like, does this work? overarchingly and you can't overlook the stupidity whether you contributed directing or writing i do think that you're probably going to rate it more towards jake i i still think that it's a good film i still think that you should watch it i I, I do think that if they make a sequel out of it that it will be more interesting hopefully i think they should play because they don't need to do exposition anymore i think like they did an orphan first kill they should play into the into some kind of campiness or or like goofiness because to yeah. me the premise is so over the top that you like you have to have some kind of uh, uh, sense of humor about it or style or you know whatever instead of this just like dour. I think if they made it into a traditional slash slasher film, I think a lot of slasher films have these like uh, like uh, plot lines and storylines that don't make sense, and it's more for like yeah. slashing. I think Scream can do that and things. I like- just I, I just think like. If you want to see this movie, film, like just watch It Follows instead. If you haven't seen it, like It Follows is just a better movie. And here's the thing: replace okay, replace having sex with killing yourself in front of someone, and uh, and then you've got you know uh, smile. And instead of smiling, you have a creepy thing lurking following you that also takes the shape of people you know and love just like in smile except it doesn't just like pop out it has like rules where it just is slowly approaching i think it's way more i think unique and scary i think the only similarities between this and it follows is literally the fact that there's a monster that's trying to imitate itself it's transfer of some kind I don't think the tone of the movie is the same. I don't think the plot lines are the same. I think the thing that's... Trying to do like the A24 aesthetic with a very mid-2000s grudge kind of like... Yeah, that's why I say that you can't really compare the two in that sense. But it's just... Well, no. Well, it's all jump scares. Like this movie, it's all jump scares. Yes, but it's a different vibe. I don't think think you can replace it with It Follows, so I disagree with that. Okay, they're they're definitely not the same. It Follows is... insanely better so if you want a better (laughs) uh movie overall then let us know what else we should watch october has ended 
sadly. Probably done with Saturday horror horror film um, theme that we've been carrying on all through October. There's a few I want to see and let us know what movies are on your radar for the end of the year that we should check out because we want to see them. So please let us know what to watch. Thank you so much for watching. And Thank you for before, watching. And we'll talk to you very soon. Talk to you later. Bye. I don't sleep anymore because of this film. Bye. October has fucked me up for life. Bye. I am traumatized forever. Bye. Sorry. <laughs>